So the brother said, do you have to keep the Ten Commandments to get the kingdom of heaven? Give me uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Come over here. Come on. Let me show you. You want to hear the word of God? Let me show you. Do you have to keep the commandments of God to get the kingdom of heaven? Young man, listen. You have to keep God's commandments if you want to enter hey. eternal life. All right, read it. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Listen up, brother. Listen up. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? How you get eternal life? A young man came to ask Jesus, what do I have to do to get eternal life, the kingdom of heaven? Go ahead. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, but if you want the kingdom of heaven, eternal life, do what? Keep the commandment. What the Bible say? Keep the commandment. What did, you, what did Christ say that you had to do to keep it, get to the kingdom of heaven? What did he say? He said keep the commandments, right? So are you keeping the commandments? Okay, okay. so you need to keep God's commandments from here on out. You understand that? You're not even keeping the fourth commandment. You know that, right? You know that? What day are you supposed to go to church? I'm asking you a question. What day did you go to? You ever been to church? You've never been to church in your lifetime. Come on, man. Now you're breaking what? What's that? The, the eighth commandment? Said what is it? Nine commandment? That's a not a lie? Give me that. Give me that. Because he don't, he don't know that commandment. Give me that. You somebody take commandment. Let's get that one. Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You're lying. You know that you've been to church before in your lifetime. And you went on a Sunday. And that's not biblical. You understand that? The Bible, well listen, the Bible said the fourth commandment, give me that verse 8. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day. The Bible says remember the Sabbath day. For all you brothers and sisters here in Ghana that go to church on Sunday, Sunday worship, first day of the week, you're wrong. You're in error. And you will not enter the kingdom of heaven worshiping our idol God on the false day. You understand that? That's not the day that God told us to worship. God said the seventh day of the week, that's Saturday. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is the Lord's Sabbath. Right. But many of you out here on Saturday, what you do? You buy, you sell, you cook. That's not biblical. God didn't give you liberty to do that. You put that under your own vices. Why? Because you love money. Some of you are covetous. Some of you are put in poverty conditions where you don't think that you got to serve God. You just want to make the money. Read it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, young brother. You understand that? Go ahead. Six, six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. So God said you got six days to work. You understand? Six days to go out here and work. You understand that? Read. But the seventh day. The seventh day. What's the seventh day of the week? Say it again. No. You got a calendar on your phone? Who got a phone and show him a calendar? Y'all not show him a calendar. We got to make sure y'all understand this. Because y'all out here serving idol gods and don't know it. And that's why uh, Africa is colonized. Because when white Jesus come in town, he steal your resources and he leave you with a religion. What's the first day? What's the seventh day of the week, brother? What's the seventh day of the week? Huh? What's the Say it. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. Saturday is the seventh day of the week. You understand that? Now, what does the Bible say? Read it again. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So from day one through day six, that Sunday to Friday, you can do all your work. You paying attention? Pay attention. Go ahead. But the seventh day. But the seventh day. What day is the seventh day? Saturday. The seventh day. Saturday what? It's the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It's the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. You understand that? God said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Holy means separate. So can you do on Saturday what you do the rest of the week? Huh? No. He already gave you one stipulation. You cannot work on that day. What else can you not do on that day? What else can you not do on Saturday? I can't hear you. You're right. You cannot go to work. What else? Because there's others too. It's not just work. There's other things you can't do on that day. You got that for me? Exodus 35 and 3. Watch this. There's something else you're not supposed to do on Saturday. These are the oracles of God that you need to be learning so you can get out of this oppressive state. Because some of you got your businesses open on Saturday. That's against God. Bring it up. Wait. Exodus chapter 35, verse 3. Ye shall kindle no fire 
throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. God say you should not kindle no fire, meaning you should not cook on the Sabbath day. You should not heat up your food on the stove or in the microwave on the Sabbath day. You understand that? That's what God says. You understand you prepare your food the day before, young man. What's your name? What's your name? Huh? Phyllis? All right. So, Phyllis, according to the Bible, God says you cannot cook on the Sabbath. You understand it? What day is the Sabbath? Saturday. You understand that? So come, on. Is, come on. Come on, come on. So this is the Exodus chapter 20, verse 10. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, man. I don't understand y'all here. Y'all trying to, okay, I'm going to deal with you real quick. Just stay patient for me. Sister, right here. Y'all's attention span is short. You, if I didn't know no better, I would think y'all was all rich and had great lives. But when I come here, I see how poverty stricken you are. You got gold that you walk on every single day. There's literally gold under your feet, but you don't benefit from it. Another race of people come to your land and steal your gold, and you happy about it. You running away from the word of God like this ain't the greatest news you ever heard. You didn't even know what the Sabbath day was. Now we show you how to get eternal life, and you running away. Feelers, that's not a man of God. A man of God stays and hears the word of God. You understand that? How old are you? You're 16 years old. And in 16 years, old, years, you didn't know what the Sabbath day was. Now you're hearing it and you're running from it. Don't do that. Don't run from God. Run. We didn't come all the way from America here to hear ourselves talk. We came to teach you who you are. Run. So you can get eternal life. Read it again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 9. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. You can work for six days to make money. Sunday through Friday is when you make your money. Go ahead. But the seventh day, but the seventh day, which is what day? Saturday. The seventh day, read, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. God said that's the Sabbath. You cannot work on the Sabbath. This building should be closed on the Sabbath. All these buildings and venues should be closed on the Sabbath. Every bank. Every pharmacy, all that should be closed on the Sabbath day. God does not, God does not condone us buying and selling on the Sabbath system. You understand that? Read that, Nehemiah. The one you about to get. Watch this. Let me show you something. Because y'all gotta learn the word of God so you can get eternal life. If you don't learn the word of God, you will not inherit eternal life. You will live a poverty-stricken life here in Ghana, and then you will die and get thrown in the lake of fire. Does that make sense? To go through hell on this earth and then get thrown in hell. Does that make sense? So you're in hell now, so God can deliver you from it. Read that for me. Nehemiah chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. So ware, right? Or victuals. Victuals is food. So they bring stuff out here for you to buy, like the Gucci belts. Was that the Gucci, by the way? The new, the New York hats and all that stuff like that. The cell phone chargers and the, and the earphones and all this stuff. If somebody brings that and tries to sell that to you on Saturday, go ahead. That we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath day. On the Sabbath, you don't go and buy these things. You buy these things Sunday through Friday. When the sun goes down on Friday, that's the beginning of God's Sabbath. Good. When the sun goes down on Saturday, that's the conclusion of God's Sabbath. Then you're free to buy, sell, cook. But on that particular day, God does not want you buying, selling, or cooking. Bring it up. You understand that? Go back to go back to Matthew chapter 19. So how do you get the kingdom of heaven? How do you get the kingdom of heaven? Huh? By honoring God's Sabbath. Okay, how do you get the kingdom of heaven, brother? What's your question? Listen up, I'm gonna show you about the about Christ. Give me one second. Jesus Come here. Hey, you Jesus left earlier Jesus when you said Jesus is black. You gotta keep the commandments. Jesus, Jesus said have a beard too. Man. And friends. And keep, keep, keep the pray. Sabbath. Keep on crazy. Come here. Apart from Israel. Come here. I said, apart from Israel, can a man practice uh, Sabbath day? In the foreign land, like Ghana, like Ghana and America, I want to know whether the Sabbath was meant for only the land of Israel. No, the Sabbath is meant for everywhere you are. There's a scripture that says, in all your dwellings. I believe it's uh, Exodus 16, 23. I'm going to show you something. Exodus 16, 23. God gives you a stipulation on the Sabbath about not cooking. We were talking about that earlier. You can't cook and you can't sell on the Sabbath. Watch this. Read. Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow 
is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Uh -huh. Bake that which you will bake today. So you put bread in the oven to bake. So you bake that. Hold on, I'm not finished. Be, no, no. I understand it. Be quiet so you can learn. All right? Don't cut me off. Read. Bake that which you will bake today. And see that you will see. And that which remaineth over. Lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So the Bible says, you know, I'm just reiterating on the not cooking. Because somebody might say, well, if I can't cook, how do I eat on the Sabbath? You cook it the day before. Now give me 1 Kings 8, 46 and 47. So God says, listen, God says on the Sabbath, you don't buy, sell, or cook. Now he asked a good question. He said, well, how can I keep the Sabbath if I'm in Ghana? Or if I'm in Sierra Leone? Or if I'm in America? Isn't it for the land of Israel only? Let's see. Read. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not. So everybody sins. Everybody has broken God's commandments one way or another in their lifetime. Everybody sinned. Go ahead. And thou be angry with them. God got angry with us, y'all. And he sent us on slave ships to the Americas. That's how many of us got to America. Our ancestors were taken from Elmina Casa, the door of no return, and brought across the Atlantic Ocean as slaves. That's how we got there. Because we were here with you at one time. And they took us there. Go ahead. And delivered them to the enemy. Go ahead. So that they carried them away captives Read. unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. If you remember who you are, that you're an Israelite, go ahead. In the land where they were carried captives. So this land is far away from Israel, right? Go ahead. And what do you want us to do? And repent. What do you want us to do? Repent. He wants us to repent. What does it mean to repent? Turn back to God's commandments. So if we way in China, we keep the Sabbath. If we in Ghana, if we're in Sierra Leone, if we in Afghanistan, we still got to keep the Sabbath. Because right. God requires of us to repent in the land we were taken captive. Right. So yes, you got to keep the Sabbath. Now hold on. Are you going to start keeping God's Sabbath day? Huh? Well, let me tell you something. You ain't got much time. That's the worst thing to say. Sister, listen to this because you're young. You're young too. The worst thing to say is, I have time. Because when Christ comes, he going to come when you don't expect him to come. Second Peter 3 and 10 real quick. When Christ comes, he's not coming when you expect him to come. Because if he came when you expect him, you're going to make sure the house is clean. You're going to make sure you're doing right. But if he comes when you don't expect him, he might catch you slipping. You're not obeying the commandments. You know how you know? You know how I know? For, uh, you know no. No, no. I give unto you, right? To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and to love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You're talking to the prophets. I know that. But what I'm showing you, you're not doing none of that. You're not loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, and soul because he told you to keep the Sabbath. You choose not to. So you don't love God. And you don't love your neighbor because you're not showing this young lady and this young man a good example. So you're breaking both of those commandments. Right here, right now. Read. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 10. Now this is for you and all of you. Listen close. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Does a thief say, hey, uh, what's your name? Stephanie? Stephanie? All right, Stephanie. Uh, I'm coming into your house at 3 a.m. tonight and I'm going to steal everything, okay? So just be ready for me. Does a thief say that? No, who? He don't say that. What does a thief do? While you're in the middle of your sleep, bam, he kicked through the door and steal all your stuff. Right? Read it again. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. When Jesus Christ come back, it's going to be like a thief in the night. Go ahead. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The heavens is talking about is all your infrastructure and your buildings and your governments. Because he's not going to destroy the whole planet Earth because that's his creation. Why would God destroy his, whole, his creation of the Earth? Because... Black people are wicked. Or because evil is going on on the earth. No, he'll just destroy you off of his earth. And start over with a righteous people. You understand? So he said, he's coming as a thief in the night. You don't have time. You ain't got time to think about if I'm going to keep God's commandments or not. No, you need to start doing it now. Psalms 119.59. Yes, come on over here. Y'all, y'all come in. Come on over here. What'd you say? Come on. Because she got a question about what color Jesus is. I ain't forgot. I ain't forgot. I'm dealing with a point. What's your question? Come on, come on, come on. So I can deal with her question with y'all's. They're good questions. What, what are the questions? Just like they don't want it. They're shy. They should be like that, right? They should be shamefaced. They got on dresses. They're shamefaced. What is their question, Seth? Go ahead. 
Psalms 119 verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimony. So he said he thought on his ways. He heard the scripture about the Sabbath day. And he said, you know what? I didn't know the Sabbath was Saturday. Or I'm in violation right now. I'm not doing God's Sabbath like I should. That's what he's saying. I thought on my ways. Go ahead. I made haste. He said he made haste. What does it mean to make haste? Move quickly. That's what it means to make haste. Go ahead. And delayed not to keep thy commandments. So King David, when he heard that he was in sin for committing adultery with another man's wife and having him killed, he immediately repented. When you learn that you weren't keeping the Sabbath day according to Scripture, you're supposed to immediately repent. That's what the Word of God is saying. So guess what? We learned we weren't supposed to shave our beard. Guess what we all did? We started growing a beard. When we learned we had to have fringes on our clothes, guess what we did? We went to our wives and said, look, we need you to sew these things on our clothes. I don't know why. I just learned it in the Bible today. Just do it. You understand? Why? Because the Word of God says so. Now, give me the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Bishop, do you still have that, 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 um, that book with the image, the pillory book? I'm going to show you something, sister, historically that you probably never knew. This image right here is not Jesus Christ. Somebody hold this up for me, Daniel. Watch this. Let me step here. Hold this up. All right. Now you see this right here, right? This man right here, do you know who that is? That's a man named Cesare Borgia. He was the son of Pope Alexander VI of Rome. You understand? He commissioned Pope Alexander VI of Rome, paid famous Renaissance painters like Michelangelo, Donatello, to paint his son as the Renaissance image of Jesus. Look, this is his son. This is the picture that he had. Look, these are the sketches. This is from a book. Uh, this is from a book called uh, The Boy's Tears by Marion Johnson. You understand? Look, it's showing you images where he was painting this man as Jesus. So this image that you see of Jesus today is not the biblical Jesus of the Bible. Right. It's not historically accurate, nor is it biblically accurate. Now I want to show you something because the bishop has a book right here. Come here, y'all lady. I want you to see this. In the Pillory by John Bond. Okay? Now watch this. Let's go inside the book. Now you see this picture right here, right? You see this picture? Let's read what it says. I must hold this picture right here. Okay. The original of this bust was found in the church of San Salvatore in Termas, now destroyed. It is an open secret that Cesare Borgia, the son of Pope Alexander, had posed for it upon the demolition of the church when the bust disappeared until it was rediscovered on the walls of penitentiary of Civita Castellina near Rome. You see that? So who is that man? Salvatore means savior, by the way. Who is that man? That's Cesare Borgia. But who does he look like? He got the crown of thorns. Thank you. Thank you. You see that? So historically it's showing. Now look at this. It says, you see this image, right? It says, bust of the Savior, right? Posed for by who? Cesare Borgia, right? It was removed from the church of San Salvatore in Termas, now destroyed, in the monumental morgue of St. Lucia. So what is that showing you? Pope Alexander VI of Rome had his son painted as what? Right, but is that Jesus? No, it's not Jesus, sister. You see that? This is why we're here. Why do you think we came here? To show you this. You understand now? Let me show you the Bible. Uh, the book of 1 Maccabees, real quick. Listen really close. 1 Maccabees 3, verse 48. This is what the white man does. He takes black people out of the Bible. Yes, sir. He takes black people out of the Bible, and he changes their image to white. It's called whitewashing. Now hold this up one more time, somebody. What are you brothers? Watch that. I'm going to show you something else. So we got the definition. Whitewash. A white liquid that is a mixture of lime or powdered chalk and water used for making walls and ceilings white. They use this uh, material or chemical that they mix together to paint over black images. Now look at this right here. You see the black image of Jesus right there? What are they doing to the image of Mary? What are they doing to that picture? They're making it what? They're making it white. It's being whitewashed. So look at this picture right here. Look. They pay these men millions of dollars to paint images. Look. Before Mary and Christ, look what they're after. You see that? We're not making this up, y'all. 
This is in the Bible. Now watch this. First Maccabees 348. The Bible's gonna tell you they were gonna do this. Read. First Maccabees chapter 3, verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. That's the Bible. They they opened the Bible. This is the Greeks, the white man. He opened the Bible. Go ahead. Wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. What did they do? They paint the likeness of what? Their images. So this is where this image comes from. It comes from what the Greeks were doing way back when. It's nothing new. Now watch this, Revelation 1.14. So now we need to know the true picture of Jesus, right? If this is false, and this is what we learned in Ghana growing up, then we need to know what the truth is, right? Go ahead. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. I can say his head and his hairs were white like wool. You see that? Jesus Christ had white woolly hair like your hair like this brother's hair like that brother hair right there like that brother hair like, like who like his hair right here look at this right here you see the woolly hair and you see it starting to turn white as, a, as a, a black man gets older his hair turns white jesus christ's hair is the same right go ahead as white as snow and his eyes was a flame of fire eyes was a flame of fire because Jesus first miracle he turned water into wine did he drink some of that wine brother your eyes red right now like you've been drinking some wine yes he drunk wine you understand go ahead right. and his feet like a fine breath now I'm looking at his feet her feet his feet you understand and the Bible says what and his feet like a fine breath as if they burned in a furnace to brass which is brown and I burned it in fire, what color would it become? If I put something brown in the fire, and then I pull it out, it will be burned, what color would it be? It would be black! black. So what color is Jesus according to the Bible? He's a black man! Black. So what did the white man do, brothers and sisters? They came to Africa, and they gave you a white image. So when the colonizer came to steal your brothers, and enslave them, or when the white man came and put us on slave ships, you would be inferior to them. Mentally, spiritually, emotionally. Not physically, because we physically stronger, but we're emotionally and mentally weaker. Why? Because they gave you a false image of Jesus. So you would hate yourselves, hate your woman, and hate your brother. You understand that? So now we come to Africa to teach you the word of God, and there's people passing by. Like this ain't the greatest news you ever heard. Is this not the greatest thing you ever heard that Jesus looked like you? Look at look at all these brothers and sisters here in Ghana that bleach their skin. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Man, what they call it? Magic cocoa butter? Put the stuff on their face to make their face light? But Jesus looked like you. Why would you change your skin color to being lighter when God chose to give his son the same color skin that you have? Jesus was born in Africa. You understand? This happens, sisters and brothers, because we broke God's commandments. That answer your question, right? Now let me ask you a question. What's your nationality? That's right. Bring it out. You're Ghanaian. Okay. Ghana is a name that was given to a country. That's not the blood running through your veins. Who are your ancestors? Who do you come from? Huh? The brother said Israelite. That's right. That's exactly right. Do you know what Israel means? It means a prince that has power with God. That's us. They discontinued from my name and they gave us Ghanaian or African American or West Indian or Haitian. Go ahead. Oh yeah, this is brass right here. So what happens if I burn this and fight? What color will it become? It's going to become black. It's going to become black. with 
Roma.